Hey Larry and Sherry, this is Steve. I just wanted to walk you through how to use this uh, sourdough starter and actually go from this, actually a little tiny bit of this, to uh, some bread. And something just to kind of keep in mind throughout this whole process, the, the quantities, the amounts, they're not critical at all. I know you're used to measuring things out and doing things a certain way. But this you kind of want to get a feel for because you can vary things a little bit and not really, you know, it's not going to bother it. It's going to come out pretty good uh, no matter how you do it. But it's roughly kind of... Anyway, I want to start out, I'm going to take some of this, this is sourdough starter here that's been in the fridge for, you know, it's dormant, it's been there for a few months. So I'm going to take a little bit of this sourdough starter here, try not to make a mess, but let's put a little here and a, start a new container here. We're going to show you how to m multiply this stuff and make more. I could, I could literally give you a uh, teaspoon of this stuff and you could grow it in a couple days to be a lot more. So there's our uh, sourdough starter right there. And now what you want to do is take a roughly equal amount of flour and dump that in there. Maybe just a little bit more flour than that. And what this is going to do is this is going to actually feed on that flour over the next day or so. And on top of that flour you want to add an equal amount of water. A little more water. Again, these proportions are not very, very critical at all at this stage. You're just going to be growing some sourdough yeast so you want to mix this all up a little bit and it should be very 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 wet you don't want it to be uh, thick at all otherwise it's going to foam up and do kind of some crazy stuff on you when it's very very happy when it's wet it needs a little bit more flour okay we're going to give that about probably 16 hours to 18 hours and what's going to happen is in about 18 hours, and I'll show you a couple, you know, I'll take a couple shots of this throughout the day as it grows. It's all, you can see it's already starting to form bubbles, so it's just that yeast, that uh, natural yeast is just going, going to town and eating that flour. But in about uh, 18 hours we'll have that much of this stuff, which is the uh, starter but in a much, much more active state than this uh, dormant stuff that's been in the refrigerator. So um, that'd be that for now. Stay tuned. Next video will uh, <laughs> be at plenty of bubbles. It's already producing CO2 there, so it's, it's having a feast. Uh, video number two. Just wanted to mention to cover this lightly. Don't seal it up. Just leave a crack so the CO2 can escape and uh, let that sit at room temperature for uh, 16 to 18 hours I'd say before it's done you'll know so here's video number three this is after it's really bubbled really it uh, almost to the point to where it's inactive now again it's uh, eating all the flour and then what you're doing we do is you just pour off this little bit of uh, ex excess water that forms on the top So now we got that much starter from what we started a few hours ago. So now we want to double that. Add about that much more flour. Maybe a little more than that. And then some water. Mix it up. A bit thick probably still gonna need some more water I'll stir that a bit there I stirred it up here's how much we got now we'll give that about eight hours take another look so here it is a few hours after that just so you can see it's very very active very bubbly just having a lot of fun in there so I'll, I'll let that continue to, what happens is that I'll just, that'll eat up all the flour in there and it'll, will, it'll stop bubbling and slow down after a while. That means it ate up all the food, which was flour, you know, so that's all gone at that point. And then we'll add more, we'll grow it to the top. So here we are maybe 10 hours later from when we added the flour. And it's in uh, full bloom there, lots of bubbles. It's all foamy 
So it's a very active state right there. So I'm going to add some more flour here. Just feed it some more. Scoop there. And then uh, about an equal amount of water. We're going to have to about the top there. Stir that all up. So, all I did was stir that up. Just very, very active. You see all the bubbles. It's just going crazy in there. So, I'm going to let that go for another. I'll let that go until that's not really bubbling anymore. So, I'll let that eat up all the flour and produce even more of that uh, sourdough taste. So here we are maybe six hours after you saw it last and it's just uh, very very active. The yeast is still growing and eating the flour and producing the uh, lactic acid that you taste. That's what makes the sourdough taste. So yeah. I'll let it go till tonight and we'll actually uh, be ready to make some bread. Okay, so here we are maybe an hour later from the last video. Here's our uh, sourdough starter. We have almost a full bin of it here. Um, I'm actually going to go into the dough making stage at this point. So uh, something I'll talk a little bit about is the, uh, this could go on a little longer. This is not critical at all. But what's going on in there is the uh, natural yeast is just feeding on the flour and creating lactic acid, which is the, uh, that is the flavor item that gives sour, the sourdough bread its unique taste. Um, so, but I'm ready. To, I'm, I'm ready to go make some dough with this. So I'm just gonna take all. Well, actually, I'm gonna put a little bit of, just a little bit of honey in there. Maybe about a tablespoon or so. That will. Uh, I'm not even sure. That might actually help the yeast go a little faster because this stuff. The rise time on this is anywhere from two to six hours, uh, seven hours if you're in a cold room or uh, even a day if you stick it in the refrigerator. So all those different ways you can let it rise. It's going to come out good. It's not critical whether you rise it fast, rise it slow, rise it in the refrigerator, or rise it just at room temperature. But uh, I just usually put a little bit of honey in there to uh, give it, other than the, uh, the yeast is going to feed on the, the additional flour I'm going to put in there. Um, the yeast will also uh, eat up that honey right, real quick. So, so here comes our uh, sourdough starter. We're just going to dump all that in there. And uh, what's left here in the bottom is about the same amount we started with. Remember we took two uh, little plastic spoons and dumped it in there. That, that little bit there, you can just put that in a, uh, normally just throw it away. But you could just, uh, in two days you'd be back up to that again just from that little bit of starter there. So uh, I got plenty more starter in the fridge so I'm just going to let that go. Um, for this... Um, we're going to put a little olive oil in there, that just, that just gives it lubrication for the uh, mixing process. It's going to be about a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half of olive oil. Not too much. Put too much oil in there, it's going to shorten the bread or whatever you call it. But, and then uh, again, none of this stuff is critical. You'll, you'll, you'll get a feel for this. You'll have your own amounts that you use once you start doing this. But generally with these items that you pour in, maybe a tablespoon of each. Uh, salt, about maybe two teaspoons, a little more, a tablespoon if you like. A little bit of a salty flavor in your bread or you could do uh, you want at least a little bit of salt I hear people just don't like it at all if you don't put any salt in it so but so there we have uh, honey or yeast food you could also use sugar if you don't have honey for that about a tablespoon of that that's the sourdough starter that's probably about three cups of uh, sourdough starter there roughly um, I'm gonna dump one more cup of flour bread flour in there or general purpose it doesn't matter they both work, they both taste good. And I think that's it, we're gonna mix that up and I'm gonna show you something I do a little bit different when I mix, I mix it to, if I'm making pizza dough, I'll mix this up to, uh, this is very thin as you can see as it is, but that will mix up at high speed over about six or seven minutes into almost a uh, very, very smooth latex type product, very stretchy, very long uh, protein chains. And that makes really, really, really good uh, chewy pizza dough. It also makes really good high structured bread dough, but that's also an optional. You don't have to, it's kind of a pre-stage or pre-mixing stage. You don't have to, you know, depending on what you like, what you're making, you don't have to do that, but I usually do that, especially if you're going to be using the dough for any kind of pizza or pretzels or something that's going to be chewy and just have some structure to it or real, I guess, density to it as well. But when you, uh, 
let it rise and bake it. You usually get lots of bubbles in it, which takes the density out. But anyway, here we go. I'm going to get this mixing and we'll show you these. I'll show you my six to seven minute mixing process and what I end up with. And then uh, we turn it into regular bread dough after that by adding even more flour and mixing in. So here we are in the mixer. I'm just going to start out at slow speed to get some of that flour mixed in. And once that's mixed pretty good, I'll uh, bring it up to high speed, probably a four or five. I'm going to dial here. That's pretty good. Just to the point where the flour is not going to kick out at you and make a mess. We'll sit there for about five or six minutes and see where we go. That looks super, super liquidy to me at this stage, so I'm going to add another cup of flour. And then go. So after about four minutes, you really start seeing the gluten chains forming in there. All right, so here you go. There's my latex product. That's the base of what I make all my pizza doughs with. Just add more uh, flour to make that into uh, bread dough or pizza dough. But that's the, uh, <laughs> that's where I start with anyway. So we put the bread hook in there now. We just add more flour and make this into uh, actual dough. So here I added uh, two heaping cups of flour, very heaping cups, to that uh, wet latexy uh, high gluten base I started with. We'll mix that up. Once that flour is mixed in at low speed, we can mix it in. Go up to full speed. And full speed for the hook anyway. This will wetten up as it mixes, but if it ever looks really dry at any point, like, it, like it's not moist enough, you can just add a little olive oil or a little water. Or more flour, more flour if it's too wet looking. Here's the dough. It's a little uh, wetter than I wanted because I made a little too much at once. Um, it was going to be too much for the hook. But uh, once it rises and all that, it'll dry out a little bit. It'll be better. And then when you handle it, you should put a little flour on it, which makes it perfect. But uh, it's good solid dough. I'm going to just spray a little olive oil on here. Makes it easier to get out later. It keeps it from forming any kind of crust on it when it as it rises. But I'll put a piece of plastic rack over that, throw that in the fridge for a day or two, just let it rise. Hello Larry and Sheree, I'm losing my voice, but this is about five hours in the refrigerator. And just to show you how active this yeast is. It's already just about doubled its size. You know, more than double its size or around double its size. And that was just five hours in the refrigerator. If I leave it out in room temp, it's going to rise a lot faster than that. So it's actually 
extremely active uh, natural yeast. But I'm going to go ahead and cut this in half and put that in the bread pans and let it finish rising in the bread pans and then we'll bake them. Um, try to handle it as less as possible once it's in the bread pans and the bubbles come out really nice. So as you can see these rised a bit. Um, a little too much dough because those are going to rise even more when you put them in the oven. So I'll pack them back in a little bit and then put them in the oven. So here is the finished product, the bread loaf. They came out absolutely huge. This one I burnt because I forgot to turn the oven down. I always start out with a higher higher temperature first uh, just to get the crust. And then I turn it down to finish the bake, which makes the perfect loaf like this. Absolutely awesome. And then I went through the whole bake with a high temperature on this. So I messed one of them up. Probably cut off the burnt top. This whole section of bread in here is still going to be really good. So I'll have a smaller loaf of this one. I'll cut off the burnt top and it'll, it won't be completely wasted. But uh, that was even a bigger loaf there. and I trashed it because of the over temperature. But this one is absolutely perfect and deliverable. I'll probably give that, a, give that out as a gift. Hey, there you go. So here's the one I overcooked a little bit. It actually came out awesome. I just had a piece of it. It just has a little bit of a dark crust on it. But the bread itself is absolutely awesome and tastes absolutely awesome. Just wasn't a perfect uh, finish, that's all. A little dark. But just absolutely delicious. And then here's the one that came out, you know, nearly perfect. Cool. Hope you enjoyed the sourdough bread. That's all yeast that risen, the natural sourdough yeast. No, no store-bought yeast in there at all, and a nice, awesome taste like you dipped it in sour cream.